said she bought Suso a new computer. All right, here we go. Wow. It's in there. Okay, that's that one. that one. Wow the, oh, wow, the piston's actually moving. That's amazing. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can get the pin to move. Alright. Let's see if we can get the pin to move. Fry it on the set. Alright. There's what's left of the cotter pin. Try tapping on that. Uh, I think I'm going to use some creepy oil. Uh, cool. Russ has got you right there. Oh, yeah. bolt. This one came out. This one broke. All right, so we're going to do some gunk on that and get that set up. before and after so
Oh yeah, we're gonna try to. All right, spindles are next here. Getting them cleaned up. They got a lot of crud and stuff on them, but I think these are gonna clean up really nice. Well, we got all the bolts out, the broken ones. Smoking. But that caliber is good. It's all separated. Now we can get it cleaned up. All right, these are the caliber brackets. As you can see, they are in pretty rough condition. This is the other spindle I'm gonna be starting on here. You see how the other one was a lot more corroded and a lot more crusty with old grease and such. This one actually doesn't look nearly as bad as the first one I did. So this one will definitely clean up pretty nice. But these caliber brackets are pretty rough. And uh, hopefully uh, we can make something of them quick. Uh, the fun part of cleaning this mess up. Get that fastener out. I'm going to take this seal out so it doesn't get damaged. I'll put that aside. That gets cleaned in, in a different manner so it doesn't get ruined or destroyed. We'll go ahead and do the exact same thing we did with the other spindle. And we'll get all this crud off here. This usually requires some razor blade time because a lot of this stuff is really caked on heavy. And the wire brush won't get it. And then you have to go after it with a razor blade. There is some assembly line markings on these things still visible paint marks and things like that. And I've documented some of that stuff already, so when I go and finish these things off, I will be replicating those markings. So they are assembly line correct. You know, my car is not a points car, you know, like that or anything. It's just, it's something I like to do. It's kind of a, it's a, this is a hobby, I guess you could say. An obsession, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I just want it to be right. You know, I don't have a lot, like under the hood, I didn't do all the uh, stencils on the firewall or anything like that. I, I never did that. But, you know, and all the little stickers everywhere. I did some of it, a lot of it on the suspension. I retained the original spring tags for the front springs and I laminated them. And then... We used a wire tie, stainless steel, and uh, basically like you do on an airplane, wire tie everything on, we used the same method. And I wire tied the original spring tags to those front coil springs. And uh, one of the reasons was is because I was, at, you know, I was actually able to save those original tags. And I thought it would be kind of cool to keep them. And the other thing is, is they do not make a reproduction of that number that was on my springs. You know, I see all these tags, and they all have different numbers, but they don't have the the number my springs had. And I do have the F41 high performance suspension that was offered on the car back in '68. It did receive that option. Um, I decoded that spring number because General Motors had many numbers for those springs. That's why they only reproduced some of them and not, not all of them. And uh, my spring number did reflect F41 front suspension. Uh, the rear suspension, originally the car was a, uh, a single leaf, mono leaf spring. 
and I switched that over to a four leaf spring off a 1968 Z28. I was fortunate enough to find an original set of leaf springs off a of Z. And they were in great shape. I took them all apart, cleaned them, painted them, and then put them back together with the proper rivets. We riveted everything back together here in the shop with the correct hardware uh, and retainers to, to put those springs back together so they are as original. Um, you know, the, the color I painted them, you know, they were, all, they were natural steel, that's why they, they rusted right away. So, but I was able to find a color that replicated that natural steel, and it, it's actually a, um, Duplicolor makes a, a vinyl paint, vinyl and uh, plastic paint that's kind of a grayish color that was exactly the color of those leaf springs, and that was the uh, paint that I had used on the leaf springs to make them look authentic and keep them from rusting because it is street driven. This is coming along really good. It's amazing how good all these parts are coming. It's kind of like how it was with the car, even though the car looked, you know, terrible. Uh, when it was found and smelled even worse than it looked. Oh my God, the smell was was horrendous. Mice were living in it, been living in it for over 35 years. And of course, when you live somewhere, what else you do? You go to the bathroom there. And uh, those mice were uh, using the ashtray as a urinal and it, it was a pretty bad situation. It smelled very bad. It took me years to get the smell out of everything. I was using bleach and different cleaners and uh, odor eliminators and five gallon buckets with all the soft parts of the interior. Interior soaking in them. For years as we were doing the paint and body work on the car and uh, restoring all the bits and part pieces um, so it had time to you know basically dissipate that smell and now you know even though you know I retained 95% of that original interior and, and when you get in that car it doesn't smell it actually smells kind of like a new car still. You know, it doesn't have a, 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 you know, that musty old 50 year old car stink that you always smell in some of these old cars. Um, the car smells nice. It smells fresh and modern. All right. This is coming along really well. All right, I'll finish this off. I'll pick up the video here shortly, and we'll see what it looks like with just a wire brush cleaning. Stand by. Well, there it is. All right, ready for the next level. And here are a bunch of S2000 drive shafts and axles that are one, yeah, one or two of them are going to be restored and repaired. A couple of them are going to go to the recycler because they are beyond repair. Now we're working on the caliber brackets. These were pretty rough, are pretty rough. And there's our part number. Oh, okay, right there. Now we can see it. That's going to reveal itself here. Oh, there it comes. Nice. So you know that stuff is for real there. All right. But I'm going to get all this corrosion off here. 
take a little bit of time and effort, but well worth it as these things are extremely expensive. If you want the real deal, if you want reproduction, I think they're about a about 150 to 200 dollars for a set of these in reproduction. And as for the real deal, they can be anywhere from you know up in the 300 dollar range or so. And then you got to play them. So we're going to do our best to see what we can do about getting all this corrosion off it. Hopefully they're not too terribly pitted that, you know, they'll look good enough after they played plated to, to look really nice and definitely be, you know, a, a good survivor piece when we're done with the restoration. Or maybe call it a preservation. I don't know. It's, I guess it's a res restoration because they are going to have to get replated. There's just no way that I'm going to be able to save anything on this when it comes to plating-wise because it's gone already. But it is cool to see the part number on it. And this is the left-hand side. And it's coming. I mean, you can see that. It's coming off. So it just takes time. I really like doing this. It's uh, satisfying, you know, to to restore something and, and bring it back. I don't really get a lot of joy, and I don't see how you can get joy out of ordering something out of a catalog to replace a part that, with a little bit of effort, you can preserve and keep. You know, you go to a car show or a car meet, whatever, it gives you a little bit of credibility if you got yourself, you know, get your hands dirty and actually have done some of the work yourself, even if you're not capable, but at least you go out and find parts for the car, you know, hunt down that, that real deal stuff that makes it unique and special, not just a catalog car, you know ordered parts from overseas. Yeah, it's really coming up really good. I mean, definitely going to be a good save here. So far I have really zero money in this uh, just all other than you know buying the parts which I got for practically nothing I got everything for for scrap because it just you know people that had it just didn't want it and so well we're going to put Brembro's on or something like that and we don't want to deal with any of this whole rusty crap I said okay I said I love rusty gold and that's what this is to me The Camaro is probably one of the most real cars out there on the street that's street driven. I still have to, um, I had restored the original gas tank, but. There was some areas that I, I had missed that it ended up springing a leak after it was in the car after a couple of months. So I pulled the gas tank back out, put a aftermarket one in that Canadian company makes uh, a reproduction. So I bought it out of Canada, put that in the car. And it's a nice gas tank. It works well. And it's probably what you see in pretty much every car you see out there that's been restored as a, you know, a replacement gas tank. But I actually, you know did fix the original gas tank and put it in the car even had the original um steel manufacturer stamp on it we re 
uh, reproduced that and we'll put it on the tank. We found traces of the original stamp when I was restoring the tank, figured out what the manufacturer was, looked it up, got a reproduction of that original stamp. And when we did the stamping, we didn't just spray paint it on the gas tank. We did it with dye, just like it would have been done originally back in the 60s. So it was right on the money. And I will get that tank back in the car eventually. I'll get Bobby Dodson Daddy. He's going to do the welding on it. Or soldering, actually. I think we're going to solder the holes closed. And then put a sealer in it, probably. And then go ahead and put that tank back in the car so it actually still has its original born with production line gas tank. Still has the original fuel pump on the car. Fuel pump was rebuilt in the 70s, late 70s, and it's still on the car to this day with that original rebuild from them. And I still have the, um, the rebuild sticker. I left it on the side of the fuel pump. From when it was done. The alternator, still the original alternator, voltage regulator, everything. Everything has been repaired and put back on the car. All right, we'll go get started on this next one here. Let's see how that comes up. All I'm cleaning this in right now is just brake cleaner. You know, just an aerosol brake cleaner. It's just leftover brake cleaner from cleaning up differential parts, you know, today. So I'm taking that old brake cleaner that I normally would just recycle, and I'm going to get one more use out of it by cleaning up these brackets by hand with a just a wire brush. And you can see it's it's coming apart, it's coming up, it's coming back. And that's all you have to do, just keep working it. And this isn't a really hard uh, wire brush, it's, it's a pretty mild wire. I'm brushing my hand with it, it's not hurting me, so you can tell it's, it's very gentle. All we're trying to do is remove that that corrosion and try to preserve the plating as much as possible, even though I'm gonna end up replating it. I just wanna see how good I can get this thing, you know, before I send it off for plating. We've been talking about doing plating in house here. We have every, all the equipment to do it. We just aren't set up for it. But we've been talking about doing it here, you know, CAD plating, zinc, stuff like that, no, no, no chrome or anything. We're not gonna be getting into anything like that, but basically just this uh, yellow chromate finish type of stuff. Look at that. That's coming up really good. Super nice, very exciting. Uh, there's our part number, there we go. Get a little bit more off there, and there it is. And that's the right-hand side. There's your number. Now, you'll see a lot of these brackets online, you know, for sale. Some of them will have a hole in them or two extra holes in them. They're not for Camaro. They're for other cars like Chevelle, uh, Cutlass, GTO, things of that nature. They all vary a little differently than, than the Camaro one. So when it comes to, you know, putting one of these brake setups together, you got to be really mindful and knowledgeable about your parts before you buy them because you can be spending a lot of money on expensive stuff and, you know, trying to do the right thing, getting the car back to where it was and end up getting the wrong part. So be aware that all these brackets do vary just a little bit from one car to another. You want to make sure that you get the one that belongs on 
the car you're restoring if you're going for originality. All right. Oh, there's Shop Kitty. What you doing, Shop Kitty? Hold on, let me get this over here. Shop Kitty. You out for a stroll today? Next uh, segment, we'll uh, show, you know, further progress. Thanks for watching. This is the rubber seal, which is still in good shape. I just got more work to do on it. And that seal goes on like this. So when this is done being treated and everything goes back together, that seal will go back into place. This is the other hub. It's also in excellent condition. It is drying right now. It's been treated for rust. One spindle done. The initial work is done, getting all the rust off of it, corrosion and whatnot. Looks really good. Nice shape. All right, next video we'll have some really great stuff. Hopefully the caliber will look good enough to put on the next video. The restoration is going really well, so you'll see some of that. And um, please subscribe, hit the like button, make comments, and really appreciate it and thanks for watching.